As we get older and grow as students, we begin to recognize our own academic goals. We choose methods, behaviors, and practices that will help us to better achieve those goals. The process of setting goals, testing learning strategies that help us achieve those goals, and evaluating the results of our efforts is also known as self-regulation. Being a self-regulated learner means you are an effective learner because you are able to control your motivation and behavior. A self-regulated learner is constantly going through the process of trying new strategies to suit their own needs and the needs of their environment. A self-regulated learner typically does most of the following. Number one, goal setting. Identifying a desired end result. This includes knowing what you want to accomplish, having a general knowledge of long-term goals, and possibly setting deadlines. Number two, self-motivation. Maintaining stride to complete a task. Self-motivation practices can include visualizing the end result or rewarding yourself as you complete tasks. Number three, attention control. Self-regulators know how to focus their attention on the subject at hand. In order to do this, self-regulators must be clear, must clear their mind of outside distractions and emotions. Number four, application of learning strategies. Choosing different learning strategies to process the information at hand is also something self-regulators do. Number five, self-monitoring. Self-regulators are periodically checking their progress towards achieving the goal at hand. Number six, self-evaluation, assessing the final outcome of one's efforts. And finally, number seven, self-reflection, which is the extent to which learning has been successful and, ef and efficient. Social cognitive theorists believe that self-efficacy comes from the messages we get from our environment, such as the people around us, along with ourselves. The successes and failures of others and the successes and failures of ourselves play a vital role in our own beliefs about we, what we can achieve. Self-efficacy directly influences personal learning and achievement. The more we know and the better we feel about our cognitive abilities, the better suited we are to set realistic yet challenging goals for ourselves. Now we're going to go through the phases of self-regulation by showing you a step-by-step -step example of how we can regulate our own learning when the task at hand is baking cookies. The first of the three phases is planning. Task analysis, goal setting, and strategic planning would include getting your ingredients, which is cookie mix, two eggs, oil, a mixing bowl, a mixing spoon, a cookie sheet, and an oven. We've already established that the goal at hand is to bake delicious cookies. Self-motivated beliefs might include Desiree thinking to herself, even though I'm not the best baker, the directions are easy to follow and I'm skilled enough to do this successfully. Her self-efficacy might be something like telling herself she can do this. Her expectations are to bake delicious cookies. In the past, she's burned a few and she doesn't want to do that this time. Her intrinsic interests and values are to make delicious cookies, bring them to class, and maybe get a better grade on this project. Phase two of self-regulation is monitoring. As Desiree is baking cookies, she's giving herself self-instruction. So far, so good, she might be saying to herself. The oven is preheated. Her attention is focused on the task at hand. Task strategies might be something like turning the oven light on to see if the cookies are golden brown like the directions say so she doesn't burn them. Self-observation is to be aware of our progress. Desiree thinks she's doing pretty well. Maybe she'll even clean up her mess while the cookies are baking. Self-experimentation might include adding little decorations to the cookies because she has enough time. Phase three of self-regulation is evaluating. Our efforts and behaviors are frequently judged by others, such as teachers, classmates, and friends. Eventually, we begin to evaluate ourselves based on our own standards. Self-reaction will begin as soon as we taste the cookies and give ourselves a pat on the back. 
There are certain things that teachers can do to promote self-regulated behavior in the classroom. The first is to teach students how to give themselves instruction that guide their behaviors in order to achieve goals set out for themselves. The second is self-monitoring. Students who observe themselves using techniques such as audio or video recording are better able to increase positive behaviors and decrease negative behaviors. Self-reinforcement is especially important. Teachers should allow students to reinforce or reward themselves for positive behaviors and outcomes.